This is my dad, and these are his new underpants. The thing he loves most about opening a vacuum-sealed three-pack of Crebo the Loom is the fact that some inspector made sure each pair meets government standards. But not even my dad thinks about who that inspector might be. Only in America, Joyce. Who does? Most people find those inspected by tags in their clothes and just toss them. Not my brother Pete. He started collecting tags ever since he noticed a weird pattern. Every pair of underpants he ever got was approved by one inspector. 34, you did it again. At first, he thought it was a coincidence. But as he went day after day without binding, without chafing, in complete snugness, he finally understood. Inspector 34 was really your guardian angel? Strange as it sounded, Pete knew Inspector 34 was out there, watching over him. And as we were all about to learn, he was absolutely right. say that at first, no one believed in the theories of Christopher Columbus and Albert Einstein. So I guess Pete was in pretty good company. I don't care how snug they fit. You're nuts. Guardian angel? Get help. It wasn't hard to think my brother was crazy. Every day, he sent fan letters to Krebo the Loom to show Inspector 34 his appreciation. And every night, he fired up his landing pad, hoping Inspector 34 would show. To tell you the truth, I kind of figured Inspector 34 was just a man in a factory myself, until the next day. It began when me and Ella were practicing for our school band, the Fighting Squids. This year, instead of spelling squid, the band was forming a squid shape and we were auditioning together for the coveted part of the left tentacle. What's the matter, Pete? After all those letters to the factory, all I got were these lousy underpants. Urgent. Meet me Thursday night at 9 o'clock p.m. behind the pine disinfectant plant. Inspector 34? He needs me. Don't shake it. Twist the lid one quarter turn to the right. Krebstar 9300 series has a defect in the positive battery terminal. Pete Wrigley, I've watched you grow from a toddler three to a 14 regular. Spectre 34! I'm sorry to drag you out like this, but I need help. Name it! What am I thinking? I can't ask this of you. Wait! I know 24 knots! And I'm well trained in high explosives. Let me help. 
It's not like that. The work I do is very important. If I miss one flaw, well, you know what's at stake. And yet, sometimes I wonder, is there more to life than underpants? Have I struggled so hard for perfection that life is passing me by? You seem to know how to have fun, how to cut loose, as they say. I was wondering, can you teach me? Mom? Dad? This is a friend of mine, Inspector 34. <laughs> Inspector 34, yeah, and I am... Don Wrigley, 37 stout, down from 38. That's right. Joyce, the way you stay size six is an inspiration. Pete, Ellen, you've grown so fast it's hard to keep up. You know us too? Well, I look after many people, but not many invite me to dinner. Well, make yourself at home, Mr. Uh, well, Inspector. It was pretty weird. None of us had ever seen anyone eat so neatly. Everything Inspector 34 did was perfect. Look at that stacking. That was delicious. I'll help clean up. Well, thank you. Don't touch that. Go get my camera. Right. Go. Go. Loose wood, never good. Inspector 34 showed us how perfect life could be. Now Pete is going to show 34 how to live it. <laughs> Inspector 34. You're real? As real as your new Lou Costello boxer shorts, Clem. Wow. How about a game of kick the can? Me? Sure thing. Just close your eyes and count to ten while we tear butt and kick the can. What the hey? <laughs> Only, if I might make a suggestion, perhaps the game would be more efficiently played in teams with boundaries. Say the end of the yard. Perhaps a said game time would streamline things. Why don't we think of that? I'm trained to catch defects before they become defeats. Come on, Shatterheads. Let's play can. Inspector 34 had jumped off the sidelines. Not only was he learning to live, he was learning to make life better. Thanks to his amazing powers of perfection. Eight, nine, ten. Maybe the best thing of all, he was finally beginning to learn that being perfect didn't have to mean being alone. I think tentacles sway. They don't waggle. Trust me, I've seen them waggle in the movies. What do you think, Inspector 34? I think best friends ought to agree when it counts. And you two should put your heads together and come up with something. Spectre 34. Pete, you giving me so much more than I can ever repay. This is so much better than underpants. Don't mention it. You know, I used to look at all the flaws in the world and I'd think if I could make one thing perfect, and then I did. Underpants. But why set my sight so low? 
I mean, look at the problems with the oceans and that hole in the ozone. I think I can help. And I think you can too, Pete. I want to teach you everything I know. I want to make you an inspector like me. And so the student became the teacher. Instead of learning how to enjoy life, Inspector 34 was teaching Pete how to inspect it. Before you can inspect anything, you have to first inspect yourself. This might hurt. Make it stop! Please make it stop! While Pete began his inspector training, a funny thing was happening to the rest of us. It was like we were trying to become more like 34. More perfect. And the things that weren't perfect, like my friendship with Ellen, suddenly began to matter. We had all had a taste of perfection. And now everything else tasted like chunky milk. Now that my brother Pete was on the road to perfection, You're late. he didn't have much thing. time to spend with his friends. After all, playing kick the can seemed dull compared to inspecting underpants. Let's get started, people. We're burning daylight. Come on! Working together, Pete figured he and 34 would perfect the world, and nothing could get in the way. But he was wrong. You're Parking Enforcement Officer McMillan. P.E.O. Mac, they call you. Size 8. Regular. You're Inspector 34. I... I see you're working. When am I not? Law enforcement is full-time work. I misjudge one curb to car and the whole criminal justice system collapses. I, too, bear a grim responsibility for the public good. Sometimes, it's pretty lonely. Pete had seen that stupid look before, on me. He knew love could turn a normal man into loose, drippy jello. I thought we were gonna save the world. We will. I just made one date, that's all. We're two professionals, meeting, professionally. Right left sleeve crooked label, fourth button backwards. Not bad, but not perfect. Let's try it again. So Pete decided he had to hurry up and finish his training. That way, he could go on and save the world alone. But Pete wasn't the only one working round the clock. My dad spent most nights scarfing chicken in search of the best way to stack bones. Come on, my little femur. Give me purchase. While mom fixed the creek in the door, the stairs, the pepper mill, and even her creek fixing tools, now she was ready to take on the attic. I'm going up. Even Pete's friends made kick the can so efficient they no longer had to play. Instead, they calculated the probabilities of who would win. My game. Yeah. I'm beat. Let's call it a day. And finally, the big day arrived. Inspector 34 and PEO Mac were going to have their big date. But first, Pete was about to take his final and most grueling test. Quite yet, Pete. There's one more thing. You see, 
We inspectors hew to a stricter code than do civilians. It's not enough to just pass a test. You have to prove you're ready. A real inspector will know how. Well, I have a date. But what about our mission? I'll be back. No, you won't. If you don't get it right, we'll never make it, Ellen. I was doing it right. You're just too stubborn to admit it. Maybe Inspector 34 was right. Best friends are supposed to agree. Well, maybe we shouldn't be best friends. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. While my lifelong friendship with Ellen was drifting away, Inspector 34's life with P.E.O. Mac was just beginning. Everything is perfect. The sky, the grass, the barometric pressure, the turkey and Swiss. I'm a great cook and a modest. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, <laughs> funny. What's the matter? What is it? You know, Mac, maybe this isn't such a good idea. I mean, I have a very heavy workload. It's not a good time for me to be dating. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Scene. Could cause chafing. Spectre 34! You were right. Love can't interfere. I'm needed, we're needed. We've got a job to do. You passed. You saw something I didn't see. You inspected the situation and you saw that love was in the way. That's the final test. These are for you. You'll have to fill in your name for now until we get you a number. I made it. I should have listened to you. I don't need love. I have my work. That's what I love. I came to you to see if there was more to life. Now I know there is. My mission. Our mission. That's all that matters. Any distraction must be eliminated. But... No buts, buddy boy. Time to get tough. Today it's underpants. Tomorrow, the world. Now that he had finally made it, Pete could see what perfection was doing to all of us, including himself. My brother Pete thought he and Inspector 34 were going to save mankind. Now he had a new mission, to save his friends and family from the icy grip of perfection and to rescue Inspector 34 from himself. what you're doing he sure did my brother was wearing the defective underpants from his training figuring it would attract 34 like a beacon and sure enough you pass these underpants for inspection what are you talking about suppose this isn't your tag <laughs> I say you've gone soft. You're disgraced to your number. You're not fit to inspect. What are you doing? You told me. Before you can become an inspector, you have to prove yourself worthy. 
I say you don't have the guts. I taught you everything. Now you challenge me? All right. I submit to inspection. But when I pass, it'll be your turn. And there won't be enough left of you to wipe up with a moisty nap. Pete planned a series of brutal tests. First, putting an ice tray in the freezer without spilling a drop. Next, squeezing every molecule of toothpaste out of a tube. All through the day, test after grueling test, Inspector 34 was perfect. That is snug. It seemed like nothing could stop him. Well, is that all? One more test. Give me what you've got. Then it's your turn. Watch and learn. The final test? Table manners. With barbecue chicken. One of the messiest foods known to man. Inspector 34 was perfect. And it looked like Pete was meat. Moisty nap? Not necessary. Then suddenly, it hit us like a truckload of underpants. Moisty naps? You're supposed to use your hands. It just tastes better that way. Barbecues are supposed to be messy. Eating perfectly is imperfect. You fail! I'm supposed to be perfect. What am I? Wait! You've won. 34, we're not like underpants. We're people. We're not supposed to be perfect. I'm defective. I don't belong here. Yes, you do. How about staying for dinner? We'll do a real barbecue. I'll teach you everything I know. With each greasy, sloppy bite we took, we moved further away from perfection, and so did Inspector 34, who decided he was going to give imperfection his best shot. Maybe that would mean that now and then a pair of underpants would make it to Wellsville with twisted elastic or crooked seams, but then again, maybe that wouldn't be so bad. Oh,